poet Rilke once wrote, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. Live the questions. For you use this is a deeply theological act. As a faith without dogma, we are encouraged to search for our own truth, to make our own meaning. That is the fourth of our seven principles, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. It sounds a little theoretical, but I will tell you from my own experience Searching for truth and meaning outside the bounds of religious dogma continues to save my life. I think I've mentioned this before, but last November I celebrated 16 years sober. And I got sober using the 12 steps and working with a sponsor. And I remember my sponsor told me that addiction is a spiritual problem and that in order to stay sober, I would have to submit my will and my life to the care of God as I understood him. Well, this was a problem because the God of my understanding, the one with which I'd been raised, was settled firmly in an oppressive dogma that didn't work for me anymore. I didn't want to pray to that God. So there seemed to be no way forward. Let go of the faith of my childhood, or deny the truth of my life and the meaning I had made from my life. She said, you need to put your faith in a higher power of some kind. She said, you just have to say there is a God and he isn't me. You could make it up. Make it up. She said, think of the perfect God, the one you would want to have, not the one you were taught about, but the one that would exist if you could create whatever God you wanted, what would this God be? Dream it up, write it down, and then pray to this God. Because this is the higher power that will keep you sober. This is the one that will save your life. So I went looking for this God, the one that would save me. I tried on every religion I could find, seeing which might fit. Buddhist, Christian, Taoist. I chanted and prayed and turned myself over again and again, faking it to make it. Some things felt true, others not so much. Could I really just take what I wanted and leave the rest? Could I really just make it up? As a white woman, I am careful not to appropriate religious symbols and practices from religions to which I don't belong, particularly those whose actual members are oppressed for practicing the religion in which I find myself dabbling. So though I tried some things on in the privacy of my home, I realized that while I no longer believed the dogma of the faith of my childhood, this was where I could draw out those pieces that were meaningful to me. I could take the faith of my ancestors and freely re-envision what this meant for me now. I was nine years sober when I first walked in to a Unitarian Universalist congregation, looking for people with whom to wrestle out some of my larger theological questions, looking for people who had also taken the experiences of their spiritual life rejected the dogma, and found meaning in community together. And I knew the moment I stepped into the sanctuary that I was UU and had been for a long time, long before I quit drinking, even before I had become an addict. It was that moment I was brave enough to look outside what others told me to believe about God and instead begin to live out the fourth principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. 
my search for truth and meaning began with the works of Jack Kerouac and Joan Didion and Hunter S. Thompson. When I read Carl Jung's Synchronicity and Victor E. Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning, James Luther Adams famously wrote, Revelation is not sealed. Revelation is not sealed. This means that books and music, artwork and nature, all that stirs the holy within us is a part of our sacred text. Wisdom and inspiration is all around. The world is opened up and everything we have learned, not just since leaving the religions of our childhood, but everything we have learned, including all that was given to us by our ancestors, can stitch itself together to create our personal theologies. In UU community, all of our experience, all of our life is welcomed into sacred space. And as my colleague Sarah Smalley often says, this is the profound message of universalism. Not only are all of us inherently worthy, but all of me is inherently worthy as well. No part of me is rejected. And it was in this spiritual home that I came to realize I didn't actually make up my God at all. One of my mentors, Reverend Jacko Tenhove, says, as Unitarian Universalists, we don't believe what we want. We believe what we must. This is deeply true for me. I believe what I must, not just to stay sober, but also to live a life of spiritual integrity. This is the fourth principle in action. And for addicts like me, this is not just an intellectual exercise. It is life-affirming, life-saving work. I'm so grateful to be in community with you here at CLF, where we support one another and offer one another the freedom to explore without demanding one interpretation. This diversity of thoughts and belief is what I love about being a UU. And while we often struggle to live our own principles of diversity and inclusion, I believe the struggle itself is holy. May you be uplifted and supported by this community and encouraged to believe what you must to live a life of spiritual integrity.